It's only fair that we continue. It's Rev. I am in the Benchmade booth and I'm about to go talk to Troy about all the new widgets they've got there. So here we go. Come with I mean, we'll go since you've got them out so pretty. Left from left to right. Do you want to do them all, or let's you want to just focus on a couple? Yeah, let's rock through them. Okay. Um, so first off, we have a 2018 release. This is our 495 Vector. Okay. This guy's an assisted flipper. Um, pretty unique blade for us. Uh, real straightforward. Great EDC knife. This could definitely bridge into like an off-duty type carry in the military or law enforcement community. Um, traditional to our assisted mechanisms and auto mechanisms, we do have a secondary safety here on the spine. That's to keep that thing where you want it, whether it's in the pocket, bag, a pouch, wherever you've got it. So um, access lock mechanism there, S30V blade, great action, awesome knife, very comfortable in hand. We went full liners on this guy, so super rigid, great lockup strength. Awesome little carry knife there. Do you remember what that one weighs, roughly? I have no idea what the weight no, is. That's cool. <laughs> um, something you guys have seen before, and this is our Griptilian family. Uh, the only change now is that they, the standard Griptilians are all coming in an S30V blade. So $5 price jump across the board. You're getting S30V as opposed to 154 CM. This is going to affect only the standard grips. The Dash 1 series is going to remain 20 CV. Um, and this does carry over to the sheep's foot and the Tonto variations of the grip as well. So, Tonto. yeah, Tonto. Um, new for 2019, we've got the 560BK-1. We like the black blades. The black blade. You got a code M4. We like the black blades. So we swapped out the S30V from the original Freak, um, swapped out the dual durometer handle, went with a black coated M4 blade. This is available in both a fine edge and a serrated variation. Um, swapped out that dual durometer handle for this layered G10 here. It's got kind of a black and gray texture to it with a base layer of like a red hemoglobin from tip to tail. Matching standoffs there. Great ergos on this knife too, just like the original Freak. Very comfortable in hand, awesome EDC knife here. So and that one's smaller than the original? That is the same size as the original same Freak. Time. There is a mini Freak with the dual durometer handle. There is not a mini Dash 1 Freak Okay. yet. But the mini Freak is how much smaller? Uh, it's about a half inch smaller on blade length. Nice. So, so a really, that, that's probably going to be a hot uh, everyday carry kind of pocket knife. That's what we were gunning for on this one. We know that a lot of guys like M4. The hardcore kind of knife enthusiasts are big on M4 um, as well as red and black. So um, we've got quite a few knife nuts in the in the office there and they wanted to make something that the fans are going to like, we're going to like the whole nine yards. So that's the new 560BK-1. Troy uses some of this stuff too, man. He's, a, he's an outdoor guy and likes to bow hunt elk. Very much so. Yeah, in uh, Oregon, it's pretty convenient for us. It's an opportunistic state, so you can get an over-the-counter tag uh, for elk every year if you want it. You don't have to wait for draws and lotteries and stuff like that. So I get a lot of time in the field with these things, and uh, it's a blast. Generally, when I'm hunting, I tend to lean towards something like a fixed blade. Yeah. A uh, little less maintenance, a little less worry, um, easier to clean. So. Well, let's skip straight to the fixed straight blade, to the and, and, and then we can pick it back up. Cool, man. Um, so this is the Puko. This was dropped at the end of last year, 200, um, the Puko 200. This is our first go at 3V blade steel. Um, 3V has kind of redefined our definition of toughness. Is uh, This stuff can take a beating. So no hot spots on the handle, great ergos, whether you got a reverse draw grip, traditional grip, whatever you're using this thing for, long days in the field are going to be super comfortable for you. Also, no matter the hand size. That's a very functional knife. It's not. It's not like. A, it's not like a. You know, lots of. Hey, I bought this knife to look pretty. Right. And it. And, and it's not really as useful. That's really exactly. useful. Yeah, super straightforward. Really, no flash to it. This is just a user. Um, the Puko kind of silhouette dates back a thousand years. And this is our modern take on a pretty traditional silhouette. So, so if somebody's not a hunter, how would you imagine they'd use this knife? Bushcrafting. So feather sticking, batoning, you're camping, you need to whittle, whatever hard use task you have out in the field that isn't working up an animal, this guy's going to do it for you. Even cutting food at camp. So. Yeah. And do you think it would be pretty good for skinning and I mean, 
for it? Do you think that you can get away with it? There are definitely better knives out there. You're going to generally want something with a little bit of a recurve if you're skinning, or something with a deeper belly if you're actually going to be working that meat up. This guy's pretty straight. Um, Plus, 3V, as tough as it is, doesn't hold an edge nearly as long as some of the steels that we're using in the hunt line, like S30 and S90. Um, so you will be sharpening this more frequently, especially on big game animals. Yeah. The cool thing about this guy is the sheath, again, just very traditional to the bushcraft style. We have a dangler leather sheath here. You can remove the dangler if you want to just run it on your belt loop. Mm-hmm. This allows the sheath and knife handle to sit just below the waist belt of a pack. Um, as you sit down, take a break for lunch or something like that, it's not going to interfere, jab you in the hip, very comfortable. And then we've got a little bonus on this guy this year. Uh, this does not come with the knife, but we did collaborate with ExoTac uh, to make a Benchmade fire rod. So it obviously fits in the loop there on the Puko sheath. It also fits in the loop on the 162 Bushcrafter sheath. And we basically took the uh, fire rod XL from ExoTac, turned it up just a little bit, went a little bit bigger, uh, Benchmade blue aluminum capsule. It's still got your petroleum treated tinder in here and just a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. So the cool thing about these guys is that they are replaceable, um, both the capsule and the rod. So when you wear the rod out, you can swap it out, get a new one on the same capsule, or if you somehow manage to damage that aluminum capsule, you can get a new one of those guys too. So. That's a new addition to the accessories with ExoTac, and um, we'll jump back to the uh, 980 turret here. Right off. So uh, turrets, black class, this guy's a tactical knife. Uh, Like I've kind of mentioned on a few of these, we're really hammering down on ergonomics. So we took the best of both worlds between the 950 Rift and the 275 Adamus, and this guy sits as kind of an intermediary, both in terms of handle texture and size. Um, S30V blade on this guy. It comes in a serrated black blade variation as well as a satin fine edge. We went full stainless steel liners on this guy again for strength and rigidity. This OD handle is a G10 handle and it does a great job at blending in almost any environment, whether it's urban, whether you're rural, no matter what you're wearing. This isn't really going to broadcast the fact that you have a knife that's ready to rock. So tying in on that concealment, this guy comes standard with a deep carry clip. It's going to slide down in your pocket, and again, you're not broadcasting the fact that you've got a live blade. So, awesome. That's the 980 turret there. And into the black class again. This guy came out 2018. This is our tactical triage, um, the 917. We did away with the sheep's foot blade and the opposing bevel pry tip blade of the traditional triage. Went with an S30V drop point for a little bit more practical daily use. Um, and then this guy still has the same safety hook feature in the handle, as well as the carbide glass punch down here at the base. This isn't gonna have the same hard grit texture like the original 915 and 916 triage. This is a smooth G10, um, very comfortable in hand. So, so that's not just new, it is a complete replacement to the sheep's foot. We're gonna keep are. running those. Yeah. Um, you will see an iteration of them and we'll keep the autos as well. Um, this is kind of designed as more of like a tactical triage as yeah. opposed to the traditional triage is being more geared towards the rescue community. Absolutely. So. Because there's a use for that. There is. Yeah. And even like myself, um, I've used these things on fishing boats and stuff like that. Having a hook to cut line yeah, yeah. Um, has been super helpful. Instead of having a live blade out as the boat's bucking around in the water, very safe way to make a cut without sacrificing uh, sharpness. Absolutely. So, um, new for 2019, similar to the triage, is our new 365 Outlast. This guy is jam-packed with new features. Um, it's the first time that we've done two blades off the same lock mechanism. It looks like an axis lock. We're calling it the option lock. And uh, you've got a primary S30V drop point blade here. And then on the back side, you have a 3V fully serrated opposing bevel pry tip blade that is gonna be your workhorse. So this blade here has got a little thumb cut out for accessibility, but that's also the matching profile for an O2 tank. So you can cut the O2 tank on or off without looking for a standalone tool to do it. Uh, This thing's already in your pocket and that O2 wrench is accessible whether the knife's open or closed. So you don't have to have the live blade out there to get that tank turned on or shut down. Kept the safety hook in the handle and uh, kept the carbide tip down here at the base. So just a little bit wider than the traditional triages, um, a little bit heavier, but definitely not unmanageable for a long day in the pocket. 
kind of a textured black G10 here, very comfortable in hand, whether you're wearing gloves or barehanded. So awesome little addition there. This guy is our 380 Allay. Um, Allay is the French verb to go. Uh, this was our first collaboration with Patrick Femin. He's a French knife designer. And Patrick splits his time between his home in France and his home in Florida. Traveling internationally with knives can get a little bit difficult once you're on the ground and carrying the knife, especially beyond the United States. Most of those limitations are specific to blade length and a locking mechanism. So we did away with the locking mechanism. This guy's just simply a friction folder. There's no lock, they have spring washers in there. It's a little front thumb flipper and we kept the blade length just under uh, two inches. So S30V blade there, as you shut that blade down, you've got a bottle opener back here in the tail end of it. And the pocket clip also doubles as a money clip. It's removable and we provide a secondary set of short screws. So if you wanna fill those holes up and ride this thing at the bottom of your pocket without the clip, you can cover those things up and it'll be super simple. So dual layer G10, a little black and red there, and then a screwdriver, pry tip, micro hex slot here at the base. Um, great little EDC knife there, kind of a uh, niche. You still calling it a knife? We are still calling it a knife. Yep, yeah. technically we will. Um, yeah. Not TSA approved. Right. Don't try flying with it. That's Definitely exactly put it in your say. chest it's luggage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> yep, we've got some questions about that yeah. already. So, um, saving the best for last, the new Gold Class Bug Out. Uh, the Bug Out's been a super popular platform for us over the last year and a half. Uh, we wanted to dress it up a little bit and see what we could do in the gold cell. Textbook, gold cell, we did a Dama Steel Munin pattern blade, and uh, we didn't want to forego the ultralight nature of the original bug out, so we went ghost carbon fiber on the handle, and then uh, blue C-Tech inlays on both sides of the handle there. A little Easter egg in this guy if you guys haven't found it already, but we'll wait until you get your hands on it to figure that out. Um, titanium lock bar, just the same as the original. Titanium thumb studs that have been anodized blue, as well as the standoffs down the backside there. And uh, PVD coated mini deep carry clip there, just again to cut weight, so. What will that MSRP be at? That guy's gonna be an MSRP of $750. Um, it's an unlimited limited, so we will be making it for the entire 2019 calendar year. As soon as New Year's Eve hits, we're done taking orders for it, and that'll be the last you see of these guys. So um, that's just our initial launch for 2019. We are, we've got some tricks up our sleeve for the rest of the year. So if you guys stay tuned, we're gonna have some more product to show throughout the coming months. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much for your time, Troy. Anytime. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. What's your dog's name? Macy. All right. Conversations that we start. Sticks and stones may not offend you. Words can break a diamond